Senator Mitchell, since you're known as a diplomatic heavyweight, why weren't you able to bring peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians? Uh, well, we've had 12 presidents. <coughs> Trump will be the 13th who will try. 20 Secretary of State, whoever he chooses, will be the 21st to try it in overall envoys. There are a lot of reasons for it. Uh, uh, one of the things uh, that we do in this book is describe in relatively concise terms the history of the discussions that have occurred since the founding of the State of Israel. I give great credit to that section of the book to my friend alone, who is an expert on that history, uh, spent many years in the region, knows it, uh, knows it extremely well. Uh, I believe, and we say in this book, that while there's no current basis for being optimistic, we believe that a two-state solution in which Palestinians have an independent, viable, non-militarized state, and the people of Israel, who already have a very successful state, have what they don't now have, which is secure, safe, the absence of fear and anxiety on a daily <clears throat> basis from threats from abroad. In January of 2008, President George W. Bush traveled to Jerusalem. He was then pushing very aggressively a peace process known as the Annapolis process after the city war started. Uh, and he spoke to Israeli and Palestinian leaders and said to them, essentially, he described this in the book, that each of them should be vested in the other's success because it's the only way they can get what they want. That is to say, the Palestinians want a state. They're not going to get a state until the people of Israel have reasonable and sustainable security. But the people of Israel aren't going to get that until the Palestinians get a state. And we think that the only way that can be done is through the two-state solution. And our book is essentially a defense of the two-state solution. That the alternatives which have been suggested, in our judgment, are in virtually every respect less credible, less feasible, less likely to bring about the desired result. And so we think it's important to preserve that option, which there are a lot of critics in both societies. The support for it is declining. Uh, there are many Israelis, including many in the government now, who are adamantly and totally opposed to there ever being a Palestinian state on the West Bank. There are many Palestinians, primarily Hamas, which represents about half the society, who have refused to recognize Israel, insist on the right to bear arms in opposition to the occupation by Israel. And so, we think it's important to preserve that option. It didn't happen while we were there. We tried our best. We did not succeed, as, have ever, as everyone else has ever tried. But the pursuit of peace is so important that we must continue. You can't take the first no, the second no, the tenth no, the seventeenth no. You have to keep trying. And I say that as an American. This is in the interest of the United States, first and foremost. We are the dominant world power. We have relations with virtually every country in the world. Nations base their national securities on what we do and say. And so we have an interest in seeing to it that there is as much stability as possible in the region. This conflict of Israelis and Palestinians cannot be considered out of the context of the Middle East. It is a part of the region. It is influenced by events that occur all around them, and it in turn influences those events. And one of the arguments we make in this book, why it is important for Israel and Palestinians to reach an agreement, is that would, in our judgment, permit and even likely lead to normalization of relations between Israel and the Gulf Arabs, something that both of them really would benefit from.